they can really be much more powerful than uh, the biggest nuclear bomb that we ever, you know, developed. An impossible dark object just got caught by cameras never meant to see it. Hours ago, the highest resolution images ever captured of an interstellar visitor were quietly released. And they're already rewriting what astronomers thought they understood. On a chilly October night in 2025, two European orbiters circling Mars and a rover on the surface all turned toward the same dim traveler from another star. These weren't billion-dollar observatories, just navigation cameras and surface mappers built to study rocks and dust. The images came from ExoMars Trace Gas Orbiter's Cassis camera and Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter's HiRISE instrument, achieving roughly 30 kilometers per pixel resolution from 30 million kilometers out, the sharpest view any spacecraft has ever obtained of an interstellar object. What they show is peculiar. There is no coma, and the brightness distribution doesn't follow the pattern scientists expect from sublimating ice. Nick Thomas, who operates Cassis, noted the object is 10,000 to 100,000 times fainter than typical targets. Yet the no-coma structure appears unusually uniform. Most comets develop asymmetric jets as ice vaporizes from rotating patches. 3i Atlas shows a remarkably even glow. But here's what nobody's talking about yet. Days before these images dropped, Loeb made a startling connection. A faint electromagnetic signal recorded back in 1977, nearly five decades ago, matches the trajectory of 3i Atlas. The signal was archived and largely forgotten, dismissed as noise or a glitch. But when Loeb backtraced 3i Atlas's path through space, the coordinates aligned. Just listen to this. On August 15, 1977, there was a very famous uh, uh, flare in the radio, radio signal, that was given the name the WOW signal because the observers that recorded it at Ohio State uh, University uh, was uh, stunned at, at the, how powerful this signal was. And I checked it, turns out that it came from about the same direction in the sky as 3i Atlas. The 1977 signal is just the beginning. That signal didn't come from Earth. It didn't come from any known satellite or terrestrial source. It came from exactly where this object was passing through our solar system 48 years ago. An interstellar visitor was here before, and we didn't realize it until now. You're about to see why Harvard's top astrophysicist just declared, on the record, that this object is not a comet. Not probably, not maybe. The astronomers at first called it a comet, and then when it was clear that it's not a comet, we don't see evidence for gas or dust around it, which is the defining property of a comet. Buried in the newest imaging data are three additional measurements that make his case impossible to ignore. In the next 20 seconds, you'll discover the first piece of evidence that led him to stake his reputation on this claim. The first anomaly, the mass acceleration paradox. Loeb's team analyzed trajectory data from 227 observatories collected between May and September. They found a tiny non-gravitational acceleration, less than 15 meters per day squared. Comets get pushed by their own outgassing jets like a leaky balloon drifting sideways but the measured acceleration is far too low for the observed activity. That means the nucleus must be extraordinarily massive to resist being pushed by its own jets. The calculation, over 33 billion metric tons, diameter around five kilometers. We get a mass of 33 billion tons. That's the minimum mass. The object needs to be more massive than that. That makes 3i Atlas roughly 1,000 to 100,000 times more massive than Oumuamua or Borisov. It's somewhere between 1,000 um, to 100,000 times more massive than the other two interstellar objects that we've seen before. It's um, about 10 times uh, bigger at the very least uh, relative to uh, the previous interstellar object. Hold on. What I'm about to reveal will completely flip your understanding of how this object moves through space. The second anomaly, outgassing doesn't match brightness. When comets approach the sun, frozen volatiles heat up and vaporize, creating the visible coma. Brightness is directly tied to how much material is escaping. 
but spectroscopic measurements show surprisingly little gas emission, far less than you'd expect for a coma this bright and extensive. It's like seeing thick smoke pouring from a chimney, but detecting almost no fire underneath. If the glow isn't from massive outgassing, something else must be generating that coma. And if the 1977 signal truly came from this object during a previous pass, it suggests an energy source that has persisted for nearly half a century, something no natural comet could sustain. But comets are mostly ice and porous rock, lightweight, fluffy. To pack 33 billion tons into a five kilometer sphere, you'd need material far denser than ice. You'd need metals, lots of them. Right now, buried in spectral data still being analyzed, there's a chemical signature that contradicts everything we know about how comets form. The third anomaly, composition. Preliminary spectroscopy hints at nickel emission lines without the corresponding iron signature you'd expect in a natural body. Nickel and iron almost always appear together because they form together in dying stars. Seeing one without the other is like finding a forest full of left shoes with no right shoes anywhere. It doesn't happen naturally. Additionally, water vapor, the most common comet volatile, appears either absent or unusually low compared to carbon dioxide. 3i Atlas doesn't fit the comet profile at all. Most people will miss what I'm about to share next, but you're still watching, so you'll catch why space agencies have been remarkably quiet about these anomalies. So if it's not a comet, what is it? Loeb has proposed the most plausible explanation, a dark object, a thin reflective sheet pushed by starlight, either defunct or partially operational. A light sail would explain the low outgassing, unusual brightness distribution, the mass acceleration paradox, and crucially, why an electromagnetic signal was detectable in 1977. If the object has a dense metallic core with embedded components, even ones barely functional after millions of years in transit, it could have generated exactly the kind of electromagnetic signature that was recorded nearly five decades ago and might still be emitting today at levels too faint for our current instruments to detect from Earth. The statistical argument strengthens his case. We should have detected dozens of small, low-mass visitors before encountering something this massive. The fact that 3i Atlas arrived early in our detection history and weighs far more than predicted suggests it's not part of the natural population. It's something else. But Loeb's track record speaks for itself. And with the 1977 signal now tied to the object's historical position, he's willing to stake his reputation on this. What happens in the next few weeks will determine whether we're witnessing the most unusual comet ever recorded or the first confirmed alien technology in human history. Spectral analysis from both Mars orbiters is ongoing, with results expected within weeks. If the nickel signature is confirmed, water remains absent, and independent verification of the 1977 signal's origin proves it came from 3i Atlas's position. Loeb's case strengthens dramatically. Ground-based telescopes continue tracking as 3i Atlas approaches perihelion at the end of October. The closest approach to the Sun will either trigger more outgassing, confirming comet behavior, or reveal nothing, supporting the inert artifact hypothesis. The stakes couldn't be higher. If Loeb is wrong, this represents the most anomalous comet ever studied, forcing scientists to completely revise models of how icy bodies form in interstellar space. New physics, new chemistry. But if Loeb is right, everything changes. It would be the first confirmed detection of alien technology. Not a radio signal from last year. Not a fresh biosignature. A physical object that passed through our solar system in 1977, left an electromagnetic trace, and has now returned. Or more accurately, we finally realized it never fully left. An object that's been broadcasting for decades. Proof that we're not alone. Proof that intelligence builds things that travel between stars and persist across human lifetimes. What emerged from the darkness hours ago in the highest resolution images humanity has ever captured may rewrite the textbooks on comets or confirm we've been visited for half a century and only just noticed. Either way, Loeb connected a 1977 signal to today's images, and we can't look away until the data speaks.